The Mayon volcano was placed under alert level 4 Monday after it spewed a giant ash column past noon. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology raises the alert level and also extends the coverage of the danger zone around the volcano to 8 kilometers from the crater. There has been ashfall in parts of Albay 2nd and 3rd districts, including Legazpi City. Albay Governor Al Francis Bichara says zero visibility has been reported in parts of Kinobatan, Ligao, and Kamalig after the major ash eruption. Classes in all public and private schools across Albay are also suspended. PVOX warns a hazardous eruption is imminent in the coming days. Follow Rapper.com for continuing updates. French pharmaceutical company Sanofi Pasteur on Monday vows to shoulder the expenses of dengue victims should it be scientifically proven that the problems are caused by its dengue vaccine, Dengvaxia. Sanofi Asia-Pacific head Thomas Triumph makes the statement during a Senate hearing on the controversial dengue vaccine. Sanofi earlier agreed to refund the 1.4 billion pesos that the Philippine government is demanding for the unused Dengvaxia dengue vaccine vials in the country. But Malacanang insists on getting a refund for the entire contract price of 3.5 billion pesos. The health department has since suspended a dengue immunization program, but not before more than 830,000 school children received the risky vaccine. Sanofi in November said Dengvaxia could cause severe dengue for people who were not previously infected by the virus. Still in the Dengvaxia probe, former Health Secretary Enrique Ona slams the Aquino administration's implementation of the dengue vaccination program. Ona says he wouldn't have recommended the use of Dengvaxia if he were still DOH chief, citing red flags. He says, quote, this should have not been implemented the way it was done, meaning targeting almost a million children because the basis for the issues that were being raised were still a big question mark. Ona was the Aquino administration's first health chief in office from June 2010 to December 2014. The dengue vaccine program was implemented in 2016, with former President Benigno Aquino saying it was Ona who introduced it to him. Ona, during the Senate hearing, blames his successor Janet Garin for the major health nightmare. Ona also says he did not talk to Garin about the program. But Garin says Ona called her twice in 2014 to attend his meetings with manufacturer Sanofi Pasture in his office. At the time, she was still an undersecretary. Karin also says Ona even asked her to call for a press conference. Rappler CEO and executive editor Maria Ressa appears before the National Bureau of Investigation Monday for an initial hearing over a complaint for cyber libel. Ressa is complying with a subpoena served by the NBI Cybercrime Division. Others who were subpoenaed, former researcher writer Reynaldo Santos Jr. and businessman Benjamin Bitanga, did not appear. Ressa says Rappler was not given a copy of the complaint when the subpoena was served. The complaint was filed by Wilfredo Ken, a businessman who was the subject of an investigative report written by Santos and published in May 2012. Legal experts say the cybercrime law cannot be invoked in the case since all criminal laws are not retroactive. The report was published in May 2012 but the law was enacted only in September 2012. But Cybercrime Division Chief Manuel Eduarte says the theory of continuous publication can be applied, meaning Ken could be presumed to have seen the report only after enactment. Rapper lawyer J.J. Bicini says the cyber libel complaint against the online news site is dangerous for the media because it exposes them to a severe vulnerability to punishment. He says, quote, If the theory is that if a libelous article is published in the past and continues to be accessible today and it constitutes libel today, then no one is safe. Anyone that has a libelous article that continues to be accessible may be charged with libel. And moving forward, this affects everyone, not just media, even bloggers. Senator Gray spoke calls on the Land Transportation and Franchising Regulatory Board to explain the math behind a 45,700 cap on the number of cars operating under right hailing companies. The LTFRB recently released a memorandum circular setting a common supply base limiting the number of cars operating under right hailing vehicles to 45,700. Units registered under Grab and Uber are around 125,000, exceeding the cap two times over. Bo says she's not questioning the decision. She says, quote, Data science has greatly improved. That's why many people are interested to know what are the justifications. One important question is, what was the baseline data used? What forecast model for future demand was used? But Bo asks if consultations with patrons were done by the regulatory agency. LTFRB board member Eileen Lizada earlier said the numbers were computed based on the data submitted by ride-hailing companies 
and the churning rate of drivers which takes into account those who decided to quit driving. The Philippine National Police arrests an Iraqi national who is expected to have links to foreign extremist groups on Sunday in Pampanga. Iraqi Taha Mohammed al Jaburi is arrested by the PNP after overstaying in the country, prompted by an alert by the Iraqi embassy. PNP chief Ronald De La Rosa says the embassy described al Jaburi as a chemist with knowledge on explosives and is known to have close ties with militant extremist movements like Hamas in the Middle East. Al Jaburi was spotted Saturday in Angola City. He was captured by PNP intelligence officers the following day. They recovered a large black luggage from him, containing assorted personal effects and different denominations of currency. Al Jaburi admits to being a consultant for the Hamas organization in Damascus, Syria. He then supposedly moved to Istanbul, Turkey in 2012. Al Jaburi tells police he traveled to the Philippines to meet a Chinese business group that hired him as a consultant refuses to say what his business with the Chinese is. De La Rosa says they have not found any pieces of evidence that would link him to terror groups or terror activities while he was in the Philippines. Al Jaburi arrived in the Philippines on August 10, 2017, three months prior to the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit.